That's not good public policy. Pure and simple. I mean, this province needs highly educated uh, people in every profession. I mean, th th we already have a shortage. So in some respects, at the time when we need to make the investment, uh, we are disinvesting. So I we have to find a way to manage our wage bill. Uh, and so it's going to require us to look very strategically at programs, at services, uh, everything across the institution uh, with a view to strengthening the institution, not weakening it, uh, maybe eliminating a great deal of choice for students, but what they have access to, maintaining the quality that we need. And if we can do that, then we, we could have turned this, uh, what I call a crisis, into a moment of tremendous opportunity uh, to make the university stronger. So that's my goal. Uh, but I think that the, the most uh, proactive approach is to, uh, is to partner with government, to talk to them about uh, how we can build the best system of higher education. So those mandate letters have to be collectively taken, moving towards building the best post-secondary system in Alberta. I mean, this is the wealthiest province in this, North America. We have no, we have no taxes, we have no debt. Uh, we should be talking about aspiring to be the best um, while recognizing the fiscal circumstances we are in. So though, are, did you will they have to do layoffs in the ranks At this of point, you know, too at this point, it's too early to tell what we can or cannot do, really. Yeah. I mean, we obviously have collective agreements. We yes. have to honor those. We have the Post-Secondary Learning Act, which, uh, which has a certain set of, uh, what shall I say, um, rights and responsibilities uh, for the institution. We would be looking at all of those things. We have the possibility of people who are retiring. Uh, we have the possibility of reassigning teaching uh, responsibilities. There's a, there, there are some flexibilities in the system, mm -hmm. and I, but I think we're going to need more flexibility. And so I think the government is going to have to look at how they can help us get the flexibility we need in order to strengthen, our stand, strengthen the University of Alberta. For me, the, the single most important word that I, that I believe has to drive our decision making is excellence. And how, does that how, mean you might have to look at tenures, or just one last question on that? The, uh, you know, uh, no, not at all. I mean, yeah. universities, we're competing with the best universities in the world. Yeah. Uh, tenure is about giving people the freedom uh, to pursue the scholarship that their curiosity drives them to, provided funding is available to do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we misunderstand tenure with performance. This institution has ways of managing performance. We have the FEC process by which professors who do, don't uh, perform on the, on the three cr criteria get a zero D. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't worry about tenure in our institution. Uh, if we implement the systems we have in place, we can manage quality. And is it, can so. you raise tuition on grad students? It's, it's not covered by the provincial cap? It is, everything is covered by the provincial cap, grad so there's an example of where we need flexibility, so right? Foreign, Graduate student tuition. And for, are foreign student fees covered by, they're not covered by the They are covered by the provincial cap too. Oh, we have a certain, well, we've taken the approach that the foreign student tuition is equal to <coughs> the provincial grant that we get per student and, uh, and the student tuition, oh, right? Okay. So if you look at our foreign student tuition number, it actually is what an Alberta student is, is being funded for, right? Okay. So we don't think it's appropriate to raise foreign student tuition above and beyond that. We'd have to look at that, but we also have to be competitive. So on the graduate student tuition, I mean, we are probably among the lowest in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and there's all, people often wonder whether the quality is low, which is why we don't charge much money, but that's not the case. So we've got to look at that. Our law, you know, if you look at our professional uh, uh, programs, law, very low relative to the rest of the country, business. If you go down the list of professional programs, we're underfunded. Now you take these professions, um, you know, you take business for example. I mean, you're expecting these graduates to come out with the and compete with the best, uh, certainly in North America. Uh, we need to invest more in these professional programs to, to, to give them a, a much higher quality. And uh, so I would argue that we find a way to ensure that the professional programs are benchmarked against our peers, and then the increased tuition that we should be allowed to be charged is invested in scholarships so that those students who would not otherwise be able to attend law school can attend law school, same with business school. Uh, right now we're subsidizing everybody, and I don't think that's good public policy. Uh, and then we have to look at what we, what's happening with our revenue sources. So our international student population has been increasing very dramatically. 
uh, since I came, since we went from 3% to, to, to now 10, more like 11%. I mean, that's a significant increase in revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, research funding has been increasing. Uh, I mean, we are having a big impact mm -hmm. in terms of bringing in additional revenue uh, that is allowing us to do things we could not have done. So that's where we are going to focus on. How do we increase our revenue as well uh, while we're also managing the, the whole expense so thing? Looking for more donors and Absolutely. Huge, yeah. huge. I mean, donors, I mean, we, I think that there's a huge opportunity to raise money for scholarships, for professorships uh, from the private sector, from donors, and uh, we, we've been very, very significantly enhancing uh, our ability to do fundraising, and I think that's beginning to pay off. So that's where, that's the future. That's why I think, you know, you have to look at being optimistic through difficult times and making wise choices.